Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux. Uh, today we've got uh, kind of an interesting video. This is one of those that someone requested and has to do with uh, mounting drives. Which, uh, in case you're curious, the way that I've always been doing that in Linux is I just have a script that does it for me. If I were to open up my dot scripts, and basically all that you have to do is run two commands and it mounts these two drives. Uh, but actually mounting drives is a little bit more complicated than that. Um, once you have a script, you can just run it or you can do what I did and add it to your startup commands and have whatever window manager, whatever desktop environment you're using automatically run that script and mount all the drives when you start up. But uh, before you can do any of that, you need to actually understand uh, what's going on. And that starts with a little program called lsblk-f. Uh, this is a really cool app. This is kind of sort of the best that I know of to give you information about your drives, whether they're mounted or not. It literally just prints out info about every single thing that's mounted to your system. You can see here, even including these loop drives that are uh, just set up for snap packages. Important things here, this category here will show you mount points for drives. So you can see uh, this drive here, SDA. The SDA2 partition is mounted to slash mount slash falcon files. So basically the way that mounting a drive works, uh, you can see here I've got this drive right here, SDC1. Uh, it's formatted as XFAT, which is generally a good thing to use when you're trying to move between Linux and Windows because Windows and Linux both read and write XFAT. Occasionally you might have to install a package to do that. One thing you might wanna just install just to be safe is you can do sudo pacman dash S and install fuse. Uh, but if you go and look through the AUR, if you are on Arch and you just search fuse, you can see there's a whole bunch of different fuse libraries and it actually makes it easy to, you know, if you want to, let's say for example, yay dash SS and search for NTFS, there's a package that you can install that will let you read and write NTFS drives. The same thing is true of all sorts of different formats. I'm pretty sure there's even ways to mount like AFPS or whatever the Apple, the new Apple file system is. I'd have to get back to you on that, but that's all pretty easy to figure out with a Google search. What you really need to know in a mounted drive is where it is. So. What you can see here is I have a drive, SDC, and it has one partition and we wanna mount it. So basically the way this works is really easy. We're gonna mount it to slash MNT. And if I were to go ahead and CD into slash MNT, and we use ls, you can see here I have three folders. I have uh, one called curta1, that's where I map a network drive. I have one called falcon files, that's where I map a drive that I can swap files between on Windows and uh, Linux. And I have another one just generic called USB, where I can mount any generic USB drive. So what I can do now, run lsblk-f again, and the way the command works, sudo mount, and we're gonna mount from slash dev sdc, and we wanna put in the actual partition. So in this case, it's gonna be sdc1, and you literally just put in the place where you want to mount it. You can mount it anywhere. Basically, what you want to do is just create an empty folder anywhere you want to mount it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount to slash MNT slash USB. Uh, and it gave me a warning. It said it wasn't mounted cleanly. But if we run lsblk-f again, uh, you can see it is indeed mounted to, oh, you know what? This is a different drive than I want. The only reason it says it wasn't mounted cleanly is because this drive isn't working properly. It's really old. I dropped it once or twice, so it doesn't function the way this meant to. But if I were to go ahead and CD into slash MNT USB, we might even be able to see a few files on here and we can. We might even be able to view some of those files, which we can. So that's exactly what we want to have. Got files on here. We can view them here. Hey, look, these even look like screen recordings from a uh, past video. Let's see if they are. They are indeed, look at that. This is a video about, uh, I don't know what this is a video about. The next question you might have is how you actually format and create a drive in uh, Linux, which I'll go ahead and show you how to do here. Uh, before you do that, you probably wanna unmount the drive. So we'll do sudo umount. That's how you unmount dev. And remember it was SDC1 is what we wanna do here. And then if we run lsblk-f again, you can see the drive is back to not mounted. Now there's a few different programs you can use to actually create the partitions that you want. Uh, the one that I usually like is called cfdisk. It's more of a like sort of TUI setup rather than just a command line setup. You can also use fdisk if you're into that. It's not horribly complicated. You just have to sort of read through the man page to figure out how to use it. But if you have access to good old cfdisk, go ahead and run sudo cfdisk and you're gonna wanna put in the drive that you wanna mess with. So it's gonna be dev sdc. 
And you see here, this is the drive. What I'm gonna do is because none of the files on this are important, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the one partition that's here. And now we have access to the entire drive and create a new partition just for the hell of it. We'll create a 20 gig partition. And then normally what you wanna do is set a type. Uh, generally speaking, you want the type to be Linux file system, unless you're specifically doing something else with it, like making a swap drive or something like that. But of course you can set this to all sorts of different things, an EFI drive, an MBR drive, all sorts of different stuff. We're gonna set it as a Linux file system drive. And then I'll just create another partition with the rest of the files. Make sure it's also set to Linux file system and then we'll go ahead and hit write, yes. Now, if we run lsbok-f again, we have two separate partitions, sort of from the user end, what you're gonna see are basically two different drives. You know, if you were to mount both of these drives, you would be interacting with them as if they were two separate drives, but they're just two different partitions on the same drive. So what we could do is you can see SDC1 is still actually mounted as XFAT because that just reformatting or in creating new partitions doesn't necessarily wipe that from the drive. But uh, for the second partition, what we could do is we're gonna go sudo make FS dot, and then if you hit tab, you can see all the options you have, butterfs, xfat, ext4, all that kind of stuff, ntfs, vfat, uh, what we're gonna wanna use is xfat, and then we're just gonna say slash dev, sdc1, or sdc2, lsblk-f again, and we have two different uh, drives, but the next thing you're probably thinking is, that's kind of complicated, and that has been the way that I've been doing it the whole time, but there are tools that can make it easier for you, ideally. So what I'm gonna do is sudo pacman-s and install something called udisky. Uh, now what udisky is gonna do is sort of aim to function a little bit more like what a desktop environment would function like, and just sort of automatically mount removable drives as you put them in and let you roll with them. So let's try to find some flash drives here. I got one. So here we go. I got a flash drive here and then I have an SD card here. It's actually a micro SD card and an adapter, but it should just read normally like an SD card. Uh, so Udisky does actually have a command line thing. Uh, it's called Udisk CTL. And you can basically just mount drives exactly the same way that you do before. Uh, if I were to, let's see here, let's lsblk-f again, and I could sudo unmount slash dev SDC1 or SDC2 and SDC1. Now, if I go ahead and run the Udisk CTL, CTL mount dash B on dev SDC one. It's going to want a password and assuming that you can manage to type it correctly. What it should do is it's going to mount the drive automatically or not automatically, but it's going to mount it for you. And it shows you right where I mounted it. So if we were to go into C slash run, it looks like what we're looking for. Okay, so run uh, media, maybe it's either media or mounts. Yeah, so it's media Mac and it mounts the drive right here. And there is also an unmount command, udisk ctl unmount dash B and you would just want to unmount SDC one and then SDC2, and you're good to go. But, of course, um, that's really no different than what we were doing before. The cool thing about what you can do with this app is you can have it run in the background and in theory sort of automatically mount all of your drives. Uh, so, what we should need to do is we're gonna do sudo system CTL, and we'll do enable, and we're gonna do udisks, to dot service. And what this is doing is just making a sim link that will uh, automatically start this up every time we boot into Arch. Uh, to start it up now, what we should need to do is go ahead and just run start. And uh, then what we need to do is have Udisky start just basically with our window manager the same way that anything else would. So what we can do is we're gonna go into the config. In this case, we're awesome. You could also put this in like your Xnet RC or something like that if you want. That's something that a lot of people do if they change window manager a lot. But what I'll do is I'll just make a copy of this spawn command that's an awesome and we'll type in Udisky. So then we'll go ahead and exit and uh, control super R reloads awesome here. And and it also very minorly breaks a few things just because of the config that I'm using to record. And now that that's an awesome, what we should be able to do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this USB drive, I'm going to just plug it right in. You'll see, we do get a whole bunch of notifications here saying, hey, new drive. You know, if you're using something like Ranger, you know, go to slash run slash media. And then here's where all the different drives are. But where this is really handy is with something like Thunar or a different file manager, you can see all of our removable drives actually just show up right there in the file manager. But because I don't always wanna use Thunar, what I will do is I'm just gonna take this location right here. And what I'll do is uh, let's go into my config for Zish. 
Zshar C, and I'll just make myself a little alias here. Let's see, we'll do alias drive equals ranger slash run media mac zish reload then we run drive and it automatically opens up ranger right here with all of our removable drives if i were to plug in like this sd card if i can find the sd card slot in the dark here now in theory a whole bunch of notifications popped up and you can see right there it mounted in real time and we have access to the drive so that is uh, about as good of a system as I could really hope for. Uh, basically every drive that I have in my system is going to be pretty much immediately mounted always. Uh, like I said, if you're using a graphical package manager, or something like Thunar, PC Man FM, Dolphin, something like that, they're always gonna automatically just show up as removable drives right here, whereas stuff that's mounted in slash MNT doesn't. But if you wanna use Udisky this way, uh, it will make your life a little bit easier. But usually if I'm on the command line, it's pretty much just as easy to just mount a drive and and know where it's going, write a script to do it. But whatever way you're interested in doing, one of these will definitely work for you. Uh, so that, uh, I guess, is where we'll end this video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.